Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I am bringing you today is called Twilight by the Sea. It's a 5 by 10 Oh, painted this back in, uh, I'm guessing, September, October. Finally got my... Um, my video processing done on it and now I can present it to you a couple cool paintings from that time that I've been uh, sitting on and uh, also a bunch of um, past masters I've just recently processed so I thought about doing a past master today but um, I think we'll do that over the weekend so stay tuned for that um, normally actually this is a midweek video I prefer to make it to like a my Wednesday, your Tuesday, but hey, it didn't happen. So I'm actually doing this first thing in the morning on uh, my Thursday. And it's a beautiful um, sunny morning summer here. Um, most of you in the States are in, uh, <laughs> most of you, all of you are in winter. <laughs> there's some, some of you warmer than others, I'm sure. I hear there's some some pretty big snowstorms and things going on over there but um let's talk about this painting hey uh this painting uh is based on a scene i uh came across um a little vacation about uh six seven months ago and it uh, was a beautiful um uh a beautiful beach and um it was actually end of the day, it was uh, sunset, and um, I don't know, it was, you know, there's not a lot to the scene, but, uh, geez, I'm trying to get this thing done. Well, freaking heck. Sorry about that, folks. I'm trying to look at it myself, but uh, it's not really cooperating. Let's open this with a different uh, program here. There we go. Um, yeah, so I brought in uh, a bit more color, and one of the things I think is pretty cool about this, um, I've always been a bit, well, let's just say we're talking about waves here, and um, there have been some great wave painters, but um, I haven't, uh, I'm just now wrangling with my own particular approach to handling waves. Very happy with the way uh, I did this one. Um, there's another one I've done very recently that's on the easel drawing. Um, it's like a stormy day. Um, very similar scene and layout. We have a lot of these like um, kind of coastal little peninsula uh, things here that, uh, you know, sort of stick out and um, create little coves and inlets and things. Um, so uh, no shortage of reference for that kind of thing. But my approach, um, well, it's my approach, right? And I guess that's kind of one of the things I want to sort of chat about. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about originality today. I wanted to talk about inspiration today. Um, let me start by saying I don't really believe in the idea of originality. I don't think it's a true idea. Um, nine times out of ten, when we think someone's being original, um, we're really just not aware of their influences or the things that inspired them. Um, and that's not to say that you shouldn't... Uh, well, I guess I should just get on to the other thing, which is inspiration, okay? When something strikes a chord with you. It might be one of my paintings even. And um, you go, wow, that's really cool. I'd like to do something like that. Um, you should, really. Uh, even if it's, if it's an exact copy, just attribute the original artist and you're not going to have any real problems. Uh, but what's even better is to maybe just pivot off of that initial inspiration and create something that will be unique. Now, unique is not the same thing as original. As a matter of fact, uh, you could almost say nothing. nothing's original. I think I said that already. 
uh, nothing is because uh, I'm not the first guy, for example, here to paint a colorful seascape. I'm not the first guy to um, use this sort of brushwork or um, this sort of format. Um, but I have brought all of these things together and created a unique work of art. And if you put it alongside my other paintings, um, you'll start to say, wow, this looks like, you know, an M. Francis McCarthy painting. Because there's, you can't really escape from that unique stamp that you're going to put on any work that you do. It's always going to be there. Um, in my myself, I see it in my tree shapes. I could, um, well, I mean, I did, would have done the painting, but if you were to put my painting in a, on a wall with a hundred other landscape painters and, and put me 50, 100 feet away, I would be able to pick up my tree shapes because I can't, I frankly can't escape them. I can't escape the way that I handle those shapes. And uh, to me, it's one of the parts of my pro uh, painting process it always uh, stands out um, the only way I know to escape it is to make direct copies after not even like these toneless dudes I have to go back to people like Claude Lorraine and stuff that did this very uh, stiff sort of um, uh, we're gonna do a relief kind of approach and uh, even there I, I can see um, I can see the hallmarks of my individual approach uh, standing out so, in the face of this, uh, what do we do? You know, are, are we concerned about this? Is this something that you should be concerned about? And I'm of the opinion that what you should really be concerned about is getting, um, opening yourself up so that you, so that the paintings are actually coming through you from, well, I don't know, what do you want to call it? You know, I don't want to get religious or anything here but you could say god or you could say the universe or whatever but really all all art especially all good art comes from there um ultimately and so opening yourself up to that is a process of getting in touch with inspiration um and as i'm always stressing very much um uh it's part of um of working all the time so that you have the skills and ability to communicate these um, you know when, when an inspiration strikes you know it comes and it goes very quickly it's almost never forceful you know that's only in movies you know uh, for for most working artists I think it's um, it's a lot quieter and you need to be sensitized to it. You need to know how to feel it. And uh, and for me, uh, that uh, expression, that inspiration is, uh, is you know, 90% um, perspiration is incredibly accurate because you shouldn't worry so much about being inspired. What you should do is be sitting down to do some work, you know, and in the process, uh, you start with an initial inspiration, and it's like starting a fire from, uh, you know, a, a tiny flame or whatever. You know, you've got to blow on it, you've got to protect it from the wind, um, you've got to uh, give it to dry things to to catch on. You know, and if you do all these things, you'll have a little fire, and as long as you keep feeding the fire, you know, you're going to have um, a nice a nice blaze going and uh, that's what you want but um, you do have to uh, you do have to bring it along and it's uh, you know someone could say I think it's a I, I stumbled on a, a good analogy here someone could say oh well you know uh, you're pretty formulaic you know you're always starting in the sky and you're always doing this and you're always doing that and you're always doing well the way to start a fire is also formulaic, isn't it? You know, like I said, you uh, you find something to create a spark, whether it's a magnifying glass or um, you know a piece of quartz or something as uh, hitting a rock, and uh, um, you have something dry that can catch fire, and you have to protect it from the wind. 
you know, but you also have to give it enough air and blow on it to, to have it catch, you know, and then you have to feed it things. And uh, that's a bit of a formula, really. Um, formula ties directly into the idea of originality. Uh, now there's form having a formula and then there's being formulaic. Uh, if you're formulaic, then you're oftentimes creating work divorced from inspiration, um, you know, and you'll create highly repetitive work. There's someone who has, I know we're running out of time. <clears throat> I think I can get this out. Um, there's someone having a show at the uh, Cory Art Center where I work now. Um, it's doing these very formulaic little uh, figurines that, uh, that's all I'm going to say. But um, they're not good. <laughs> they're almost good, but they're, there's a ton of them, and they're all being done the same way. And uh, it wouldn't be so bad if they were actually good. <laughs> But the, the formula is, is the thing you see first. And the formula shouldn't be the thing you see first. The formula should maybe be apparent to uh, people that are um, sophisticated practitioners and uh, can spot these things. Um, but the formula shouldn't be apparent to the layperson at all. They should just be going, wow, that's awesome. You know? And uh, formulas should come, formulas should go. In fact, one of the best reasons to work a lot is that you'll have a lot of different ways of approaching things. And um, you'll be able to do a lot of different types of scenes. And you'll be able to uh, work in different formats. And uh, you'll have a dark style, a light style, what have you. You'll have something for whatever is coming your way that you want to do. Yeah. So that's a little bit for me on that topic. I know uh, I'm not conclusive. I'm certainly not an expert. Uh, well, I'm just another guy working. So that's my two cents. Um, anyway, if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them in the uh, comments area. Or you can always drop me an email. My, uh, my website flashes across the screen there. It's also underneath the video. Uh, I don't mind hearing from people. It's always nice. Um, I'll be back this weekend. I got a past master for you. I think it's going to be a melee. The only melee I've ever done. But um, until then, uh, keep working, you know. Keep enjoying and appreciating life and art. Uh, take good care of yourself and your family. As a matter of fact, take good care. And stay out of...